Hey everyone and welcome to Rate My Agent Zoom Style, the new Zoom Style live from Rate My Agent offices. Uh, I'm Mark Armstrong, CEO and co-founder of Rate My Agent. And as always, I've got Russell Cambridge, Director of Bigger Than Scott Richmond joining me. How are you, Rusty? Excellent, my friend. How are you? Another very property well. banter. Here we go. This will be better this week. You're, you, last week you were off the Terps and, uh, and this week you're on to a nice Pinot, Shiraz. What, what are we? Uh, 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 Browns Road, Morning to Peninsula, Pinot Noir. Perfect for a sunny afternoon. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm on a, um, I'm on a Furphy. It was the same I was on last week. I'm actually Lovely. on a... We, we've got a special guest today. We'll get to him in a second. But Josh Teslin, 2020, Rate My Agent agent of the year um so we're looking forward to having josh on i think i think the josh great guy once he starts talking we might we might have to use that mute button today but um he's doing phenomenal business at the moment and i'd like josh. to thank you for letting me share that mute button i had a quick chat with him before my goodness what a guy but <laughs> hey very entertaining hey mark i've got one beef i've got one beef what is this homeschooling stuff all about why didn't they just extend the term into whenever I don't want to teach my kids at home. It's too hard. My wife's getting frustrated about it. She's getting frustrated with me. I'm trying to do work. They keep bursting in on me. Oh my God, it's just chaos. I don't want to do homeschooling. End. No more. <laughs> the problem is that, that uh, I've got four kids, as you have. Um, uh, my youngest is 10 and he's asking me questions I don't know the bloody answer to, let alone my 17-year-old who's asking me trigonometry and bloody science question. I don't know the bloody answer. I, my favorite show is that we're, we're digressing, but my favorite show is nine out of 10 cats and dogs or eight out of 10 cats and dogs. You know, do you watch that 7.30 on the ABC <laughs> no, no. on SBS? Oh, it's great. And they put up a, a puzzle, like, you know, they put up like five numbers and you've got to work out the big number at the top. Oliver, my 10 year old worked it out in 30 seconds. I'm still trying to work out the bloody thing. So I agree. This homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching reruns right. of Property Banter season one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Everyone should watch the, the, those those uh, reruns of Property Banter. That was great. But no, hey, mate, I, I, I tell you what, there's there's people that are having problems. I mean, homeschooling is one thing. This working from home is causing people lots of problems. We've got a little clip here of a, of a bloke in, uh, I think he's probably in the UK somewhere. If we just show this, this is the danger of working from home, this poor guy. Well, we didn't push play there. We've got a technical <laughs> issue there. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. What would you say in those circumstances? Oh, I think <laughs> you've got to... Fuck, I'm on... Fuck off, I'm on live telly. Yeah, yeah, fuck off out of it. Get out of my office. I want to fucking hell. Fuck off, you little twat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't know you worked in London, Mark. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was when you don't realise that you only just see the grey coming through, and and as it gets longer, it gets greyer. Um, I, I the, the like the bit I like the, the at the end is is the the final little clippy. I presume it's his son. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, effing little twat as he goes out the door. And then sorry, sorry about that. Very. Uh... <laughs> I showed my kids that my older kids are my dad, and they go, "What's funny about that? That's what you're like." <laughs> I reckon I I used to be like that. I reckon I've mellowed during this coronavirus thing is calming me down. And, you know, and, and, and genuinely, I think it's quite good because now I'm in a meeting. I've got a, uh, I'm not in my, I am in my office at the moment, actually, but I've got obviously a fake screen up. But if the, have you noticed that if you're in a meeting with someone and the kids walk through in the background, we're not actually as fussed about it as we were a little while ago. You know, now it's just like, hey, Oliver, how help. are you? The ear pods help that. I've noticed that we've got ear pods in. I don't notice them coming through. But you know, calm. This is a sign of COVID nineteen. You've got a symptom. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking? Hey, we've got to get into it. So, so as everyone Gosh, knows, I've got, my, I've got my undisruptible T-shirt on, and and we're quite passionate about. We we want to each week we want to get people on the show who are truly undisruptible people that are surviving real estate agents that are surviving throughout this COVID-19. And I tell you what, let's get Josh on because he's not even, uh, he's not even, uh, 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 let's, let me say, that's easy for you to say. He's not only thriving, he's absolutely killing it. So Josh, are you there? I, I, we need to get Josh in. 
Uh, here we go, Josh. How are you? Come on, mate. How are we? Can we hear me? We can. We can hear you, you mate. You are killing it at the moment. I, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm sure you'll you'll be happy to tell us how well you're bloody doing at the moment. Oh, look. I I think every single market that's out there, you've got to adapt or you drown. So I think, um, yeah, my, myself, my team, we've, we've certainly adjusted. Uh, it's been, what are we, the 24th today? I've sold 23 houses for April um, since this whole lockdown thing, no open homes, the whole distancing measures in place. So still getting deals done, um, still doing the right thing by people. And um, yeah, mate, selling houses, what we're good at. So thanks for having me today. Josh, what's the biggest change you've made? What's worked? Number one. What's worked, mate, more social media for me. Um, I'm doing a lot more on Facebook. I probably spend per month, I was about 10 or 15 grand. Now it's probably 20. Um, I'm getting a lot more, when I boost things on Facebook, I'm getting a lot more reach. So in terms of views on my live video per week, I'm probably getting about 25,000 views now where I was probably getting around 10 or 15. So a lot more reach. Uh, what's working for us as well is just working the buyers a lot harder. I think if you speak to people more, you've got more trust. If people trust you, uh, people will buy through you. I've always carried uh, large amounts of stock. Um, last year sold 113. This year I've already sold 65. So in terms of stock I've got on, I've got I think 24 active listings and I think 11 off market. So um, we but, bring them literally through a lot at one time. No, don't worry, mate. I think you'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only a young kid. You'll 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 be no, successful well, no, one day. No, it it is an amazing well, effort. I, I was talking to an agent the other day and, and I saw him on, on Sunday and he's, I said, how are you going? He goes, oh, I've just had a great open for inspection yesterday. And I said, you can't do opens. And he goes, no, no, no. We, we just do them at the same time, but we just book in private inspections. And, yeah. and he made a really good point. He said, they're all qualified buyers. They're not, they're not time wasters. You're making an appointment. So you're not having this call. I assume, Josh, you're interested in your thoughts. You're not having this call list of 50 people to call back. You've got 10 people to call back and they're all genuine buyers. Yeah, mate. It, it's quality over quantity. Like tomorrow, I've got 21 private inspections booked um, one after the other. Obviously, we can't have a lot of people in a gathering or at an open home setting anymore. But if you ask the questions and qualify people, do you have pre-approval? You're serious to buy? You've got finances in place and you'll sign a contract for the right property. If you've got stock and you show them enough houses, Houses. like one one good method that I'm using and I shared it the other day with a lot of my real estate friends we're taking them literally let's say they've got a budget of 750 I'm taking them to a double story which they can't afford I'm taking them to one that's the perfect house I'm taking them to one in a different suburb taking to them a townhouse which they don't want taking them to one again that's close to what they want but they prefer the other one so um, and they usually do the deal after that so that's what's working for us booking them one after the other another thing as well is with the private inspections that the agent that you spoke to we're doing the exact same thing um, um, one person goes in the house, 10 to 15 minute slot, someone comes out, someone jumps out of the car, goes in. So we don't have the urgency like we did before, but certainly um, once they see some, someone going out, someone coming in, it sort of gives that effect. You're becoming a buyer's agent. That's what I used pretty to mate. be. You know? Buyer's agent, mate, pretty much. <laughs> and look, the, the same thing goes for these digital auctions, uh, Mark. It's a bit of a, a process in getting logged in and finding it and understanding it. And a lot of these buyers aren't so tech savvy and they've got to learn very quickly how to find uh, where to get onto a Zoom to do a digital auction. And then you find you've got five or six people registered. They're all serious because they've had to jump through hoops to get logged on. So a lot yeah. of this is just, you know, I know it's a bit of a catchphrase, but uh, getting rid of the tire kickers and all the genuine people are left uh, floating on the top of the surface. There's and we're going to talk about that shortly in our deep dive, you know, this move to technology. But Josh, I don't want to do a blatant plug, but but I, I am. I'm just sharing my screen here. Ah. You are right, my agent, agent of the year. But you, you were talking, you know, as we were leading into this, you were talking about how you use your rate my agent profile. So it's not a blatant plug, but... But no. we've got you on because you are the bloody the, the agent of the year. Yeah. So so you've got a pretty bloody impressive. What's really amazing about this is, you know, a review 18 hours ago, 20 hours ago, two days ago, two days ago, two days, three. Mate, you've got reviews flying through almost daily. How yep. do you use rate my agent? Mate, I pump it hard as soon as the sale goes unconditional um, from obviously uh, the sale point of view. Uh, request a review straight away. Well, I, as I mentioned to you off camera, a lot of my listings nowadays come from Rate My Agent. I pump it out. Uh, let's say someone else is selling a property. Um, they haven't quite got me in the door yet. I would leading up to it, let's say four or five days before, as soon as I get a review, I'd screenshot it, send the link and say, hey guys, looking forward to our appointment in five days time. This is what my vendor had to say about myself and my team 
team's uh, experience with them. Um, they've rated us five stars and here's the recommendation. Thought you'd be interested. It goes a long way to getting business, especially in a market that's adjusting. A lot of people are watching us now more than ever. Main reason is when the market's good, you open the door, you have an auction, there's 50 people and it sells, you get offers on the day. Nowadays, you're having to make it happen. You're having to get a lot of people through the home at separate times. You're having to negotiate. You're really, you see who's swimming naked in a tough market. So um, yeah, at the moment, reviews certainly, uh, they add to the trust factor to getting in listings. As I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned just before, I uh, listed a nice house. I think it was 2.75%, full marketing campaign up front. And they said, Josh, we found you from Rate My Agent. You know, you've got over 450 reviews, almost 500. Um, we want to list with you. And I said, Shit, that, that, that's two and a half percent more than you get, Rusty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, did you notice that nudity's come up for the third show in a row, Mark? Maybe we should do a nude rate my agent. What do you reckon, Mark? <laughs> I, 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 I think I need to get out more before I do that. If, if, oh. if there's one thing that this COVID's doing is, is uh, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic, but I can see it from the bloody window. Um, so <laughs> the isolation weight, mate. I'm out of that nude debate. No, thank you, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's We've right. all gained a couple of kgs. Fuck. <laughs> we 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 did actually have an issue in in one of our test runs of of banter. Russell put a bloody video up where there was a, a naked man, right. which is you know, um, yeah. Horrified a it, few it, people. It, it it didn't go it didn't go <laughs> down um, too well at all. Hey, but Josh, <laughs> mate, it, it, it's amazing that you do. And I think you're right. I think I think what these moments do. This this whole thing is is extraordinary, obviously. But it really it really sorts people out. I, I've always said that in a good time, real estate sells itself. You yep. list it, you advertise it, and just stand back, and all you do is is just you know, it's like being an order taker. Easy but money. But now, good agents are the ones that are still doing deals, you know, because you're having to work for it. And 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 there's always buyers out there. You're just going to work a bit harder. There's always buyers. And I, I feel real estate sells in all markets. Like this is my fourth full year in sales. I've been in real estate for six years. Um, I've seen, you know, before pre-election times, I've seen when the market's good. I can see it now when it's a pandemic. One thing that I do like is that everyone's on a level playing field. No one can do open homes. Everyone's under the same pressure. Everyone's got vendors on their back as well saying, I need to sell in this period or the opposite. A lot of vendors that are saying, I no longer need to sell. I'll pull it off the market. So it's certainly a skill uh, getting the result, getting the offers, closing the deals. Uh, one big tip I give everyone, get a offer signed on a contract and present it to your owners. Um, nothing goes further, I suppose, for me. Get a signed yeah. offer, present them. Here it is. Here's, you know, $750,000. You're hoping for eight. This gets you moving forward. Let's go ahead. So that's what's working as well. Yeah. No, no, no. Hey, um, hey, we we have a we'd like to move on, uh, and and obviously Josh, you, you you're here for the long haul. Yeah. Um, we have a thing we call deep dive. Um, and the big thing that we've uh, there, there you go. There was our little intro into deep dive, but uh, someone sent us this. Uh, actually, Emma from our marketing, our head of marketing at Rap Agent, sent us this, which is really amazing. You know, who led the digital transformation of your company? This is something that's going to be we're going to look back on in in years to come. You know, A C E O B C T O or or sorry, A I, I can't I don't know the alphabet A B and C but or C <laughs> the COVID nineteen, it seems to be driving so much bloody change and and sort of in a good way. Uh, Rusty, how how are you how are you seeing that? Oh, fa look, fantastic! I never heard of Zoom before two weeks ago. Now it's Zoom. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, Google ga uh, Gangs or what? Well, no, Google Hangouts, and then it's. Uh, Microsoft meetings, it's all happening. No, it's been fantastic. But uh, how much of it's going to stay? My theory is uh, some will stay, but I don't want it all to stay. I like the face-to-face the -face and the uh, public auctions that we do. I don't want to be continually doing the auctions, but that's another topic. But um, no, it's amazing how we've adapted so quickly. Yeah, I mean, it, it is making a huge amount of change. We just had a hackathon in our business this morning. Um, oh, sorry, this morning, the last two days. We, do, do you know what a hackathon is? Does everyone know what a hackathon is? A hackathon is basically yeah. our tech team gets together and they just think of all these great creative ideas and, you know, automated video, um, you know, and right now you'll be able to click a button and, and, um, and you'll be able to produce a video based on the reviews you've had and mortgage broken reviews. But, I just go back to what you were saying before, Josh, that, that social's working for you now. And I assume it's, oh, it was always working. Yeah. But everyone's in front of a bloody computer. Everyone. I mean, 
mate, everyone's in front of the screen more than ever. Let, let's be honest. We're all watching the news when, uh, you know, Scott Morrison's talking every single day and we're all glued. Are we in a worse lockdown? What's happening? Uh, can we go to the gym now? Everyone's, um, yeah, everyone's watching and, and there's no difference to real estate. I think I saw a report come through the other day and it said I've had more views on a property that I listed for sale in the last two weeks than I did at the height of the market. They had a little graph just because everyone's on their devices trying to see what's on. Um, some people in isolation, uh, they've got nothing else better to do. Like when you run out of Netflix, why not just go on realestate.com? So I think uh, COVID-19, some things will stay, um, other things will go. I'm very much a face-to-face -face person. That's where 100% yeah. of the communication is. I think you've got to find um, intermediate ways to do things like <laughs> auctions, but nothing will beat that face-to-face -face contact. No, I agree with that. agree with that. It, it's interesting that uh, I don't think the public quite realise and potential sellers out there, we've got the buyers. We've got buyers ready to buy. The, the listings aren't coming on. Bite the bullet. I reckon the yeah. early bird will get the worm. If you're a vendor thinking of selling, get it on the market. There's buyers out there and the negativity about price is dropping. It's nowhere near as bad as they say. That yeah. might be down the track. The devil we know is a devil you should be chasing. And it's right now, get on the market, I say. I think it's relevant in, in both factors. Like if you're going to, let's say you have a house worth 800,000 bucks and the market's gone down 10%, it's gone down 80,000 bucks. But if they're buying a property for $1.2 million, it's gone down 120K. They're better off to sell now. And I think giving them real time numbers and saying to them, look, right now, if you wait until springtime and this whole COVID-19 is hopefully over, everyone's going to come on in spring. When everyone is on in spring, guess what happens? There's an oversupply of stock, which means urgency levels go down. And then all of a sudden, you're in a bloody shit fight again. So I think- Everything's um, come back 10% in your area? Yeah, five to 10, no doubt. Yeah. Who's Steve yeah. Watson? Mate of yours? Cousin? Relative? He works to rate my agent, Steve Watson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love your work, Josh. Just before on the love your work, Josh. My man, good to see you, Stevie. We, we, we've got a question from Aaron Pendleton. We'll get, we'll get to guys. If you've got any questions for us, please just send them through, and, and we'll, we'll get to them um, in our in our next sort of segment. But, but I think you're right. Some stuff will hang around, and other stuff will just, you know, some stuff's short term. We have to do it. Yeah. The one for me are things like, um, you know, the letterbox drops and, and some of that sort of print print media stuff that was that's been hanging on in the industry for so long. You know, do we really, I, I see letterbox drops really dropping off as a part of this because people, as you said, Josh, they're into social media more. They're doing, yeah. they're, they're thinking in more creative ways. Shit, it's bloody expensive to do a letterbox drop as well. <laughs> and, and, and we don't have any tracking ability. Yeah. So I think there'll be, there'll be some great things that stick around. The other one for me, I'm quite passionate about this. I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm certain of this. Um, Pull <laughs> <laughs> that'll take off one day, Rusty. I think I think that'll take off. Yeah, um, your, your subscription's safe there. Um, I think um, virtual appraisals. You know, I, I, I said this in last week's episode. I, I think that the psychology of consumers will change. In that, I agree with you, Josh. That we're we're very we're all real estate people here. We've all been in real estate for a long time, and we want that face to face interaction. But yep. we're learning to do it like this. You, yeah, you, Russell and, and Josh, you've never met before, but, but we were able to, to build a great relationship and consumers who are now, everyone has now got that little piece of Zoom computer code or that code that they've yeah. had to download on their first meeting and it's bang, it's in their system now. So I think things like virtual appraisals and that first meeting that you have with an agent is more likely to be digital. Even after this finishes, it will stay digital um, rather than be, I, I, one of the things that's frustrating for an agent is, is, most of your appraisals are done at between sort of five and eight o'clock um, on a weeknight. The money slot. What a pain in the ass. You know? <laughs> when if you don't you're have, doing it, it's good. When you have kids, it'd be tough. Well, and so, when you, if you're doing it digitally, you'll be able to do it on the beach in bloody, in Bali. Yeah, yeah I'll so do a virtual question, appraisal. Then, if it's going to be a virtual appraisal, Mark, do we get virtual agents? Which means that uh, you might, uh, like I might uh, obviously get Brad Pitt to stand in and do my virtual appraisal for me. And then when they actually want to meet wouldn't you know the person, difference, they go, hang on, that's not who we met. I go, yeah, that was me. But is that what you're suggesting? No, look, I, I, but no, I think, I think it'll be that process of, of people will be able to make the selection. So I don't think, we, we've got another article here and, and you know, our good friends at Domain, Tony Blamey's um, just launched a, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, you know, Domain rolls out their online auction feature. Oh, hang on, I haven't clicked share. 
So domains rolled out there. Um, can we all see that? Yeah. Yeah. So domains rolled out their online auction feature, and we'll have Tony on the show. You know, hopefully next week. Um, you know, with a response here. But you know, there's some really amazing technology that that's been rolled out now. And this is in conjunction with Bid Tracker and and um, uh, who is it? Angus there at Bid Tracker. Real time, um, real time agent. Uh, sorry, real time agent, real time agent. Uh, isn't it Bid Tracker? Bid Tracker, real time agent, same time. Bit Mark, uh, they, they, that was what we tried trialed last week. You're asking me how the auction went, and I. I mailed it, we sold it. That was a trial, but this week we actually did um, a digital auction. Andrew Crotty in my office did that. And uh, well, geez, we had multiple bids. Uh, there was about three or four bidders, about seven or eight had registered, but only four or five, three or four, sorry, uh, participated, sold over to reserve. So worked a treat, you know, and we did that at uh, five o'clock on Wednesday night. We had a blast. It was Good fun. I, I never, not something I want to promote, not something I wanted to stay around, but geez, you know what? It worked. It was fun. It was smooth. And I can see it happening. I was just thinking about it before. You Can you imagine if there's a day where we've got some really dodgy, shitty weather coming? You might just send out a text message and say, hey, guys, we're doing this by a, a real-time agent. It's going to be done in the office. Uh, don't worry, get in, you know, your shoes wet, whatever. Let's uh, do it that way. Or extreme heat, maybe do it via an office air conditioned somewhere. I don't know, just, just a thought. Yeah, I, th I, think it's, I think it's a good alternative. Um, obviously yeah. in, in times like this, I'll share a funny story. I did a Zoom call probably about two weeks ago with a vendor and he's, and look, I'm loud at the most of the times. And he goes, Josh, mate, can you just, you know, put the volume down a little bit? Like you're a bit too loud for me. Um, I've got the listing, but, but fuck, you know, just sometimes like I, I, I run my mouth at the best of times, but yeah, it was, it, look, it can go either way. Like it, it was a bit of banter between the two of us. Um, I think online auctions, I'm lucky. I'm in a suburb where we don't do uh, many auctions. I sold 113 houses last year and I only did two auctions. One went to auction and one sold prior. They both had to go to auction. 111 were private sales. So we're still wow. finding at the moment, like I've sold 23 houses in 24 days this month. Um, how I'm doing that, face-to-face -face contact and, and closing business. So what's your day market, think, Josh? Mate, before this whole COVID, it was 11 days. 11 days, well done, beautiful. Yeah. And, but I, I think the interesting thing is, you know, it, I, I don't know what the exact number is. There'll be smarter people that, than I that know. But, but I, I suspect it's about 15 to 20% of properties across, uh, across the country are sold via auction. Yep. Um, the reason that auctions are so important is because they tend to be the higher valued properties. They tend to be in the inner urban areas of Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane. So yeah. you, you, might, you might look at them and say, okay, it's only 15 to 20%, but the value of those properties make up 60% of the value of real estate being transacted. I'm just, I've just made those numbers up. Yeah. But, but you, you said before, Russell, that, you know, we're in danger of this replacing the agent. It's not going to replace the agent no. because property is a physical asset. And, and we still, you know, the, the online auction is not going to replace the inspection. You still need to take someone through the property. I, I, no one's ever going to buy a bloody property by looking at it online and watching a video where the, where the agents obviously, oh, shit, there's a bikey gang over at that house next door. So we're not going to take that photo. We'll take it this way. Uh, you know, yeah. you, you're going to have to go and fit. So the role of the agent is going to remain and, and it's so bloody important. It's just evolving the technology and doing it in smarter ways and more efficient ways. Well, two weeks ago, we were talking about uh, virtual tours, Mark, and it became suddenly the most important thing in our business. Well, that's certainly dropped down a few pegs now that we, um, you know, they were talking about banning inspections, one-on-one -on -one inspections in Victoria for a short, brief moment there. Thank God they didn't. And now things are sort of calming down a little bit. So, uh, you know, those inspections are sort of coming back. And as Josh was saying, you bank them up, you bank them up. They're not an open, it's an inspection. You have one every 10 minutes, 20. Can... It's the new, it's yeah, the new normal. Hey, we're going to move on because we, we, we have to keep this to 30 minutes. You know, this is our yeah. tight, short, sharp. But hey, Josh, we've got a question here from Fabian. Yep. Um, who says, Josh, how do I convert someone to go on the market right now when yep. they just want to stay off market? Okay, with an off-market campaign, it gives them an opportunity to get feedback, get buyers through, build trust, see what they're prepared to offer. Um, if they're getting the right price, fantastic sell. Nothing will replace getting exposure online. If you get exposure online, uh, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, realestate.com, domain, video, more views, guess what happens with more views? There's more 
eyes on the property. When there's more eyes, there's more urgency, there's more inspections, and that will lead to a better price. Obviously, don't list the unmotivated vendors that don't need to sell. Uh, but if they're in a position where they want to sell, definitely, I always try an off-market campaign first and then go to launch afterwards. So my best advice would be good dialogue. Do what you say. If you're going to do an off-market, do that to start and then uh, launch. Yeah, good prices are happening right now, right, Josh? And we right. don't know what's around the corner. The hardship might be further down the track. Go yep. now while the devil you know. Absolutely. It's not how, and I always say this, this piece of dialogue, it's not how long you've been on the market because typically people think I've got to be on the market for three weeks or four weeks. And I had a vendor the other day say, Josh, you wouldn't marry your first girlfriend. And I said to him, mate, it's not how long you've been on the market. It's how long the buyer has been in the market. And if they've been looking for six months, it's the property they've been waiting for, even though you've been on for two days and they're paying you fair market price in a crisis. Mate, move forward. Awesome. Hey, we've got one other question. I might get to it. There's a few questions coming through, so I'm sorry to everyone if I don't get to them all uh, because we've just been crapping on. And that's what this show's about. It's, it's just about, it's property banter. This is what we do. Yep. We just have a chat. Can we change know? the name? Um, property crapping on. <laughs> property <laughs> you, top shit. You came up with the property banter name, Russell, remember? We had what some other name. What a superb name it is. It is a superb <laughs> name. But, it's, a good hey, name. It, it's, it's probably a question for you, and it's a rate agent question, but, but um, who sent it through? Aaron sent it through. Yep. Do, do we think that rate my agent is equalizing, uh, is an equalizing platform for agents, or do we think it's, it's not equalizing? I'll throw that to you, Josh, because you use it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess as a young agent, you've probably found it as a, a leg up. Anyway, I won't answer the question for you. Oh, absolutely. It's a leg up. I think everyone's got the same opportunity. Um, it's like when you're at the nightclub and you've got, you know, 10 girls there that you fancy. If you don't go up to any, your chances are 100% zero. Whereas Rate My Agent, if you're requesting reviews um, and people fill it out and say, you know, we're happy with Josh's services, you don't ask, you don't get. So at the end of the day, I think it's, it's an equal platform for everybody if you choose to use it or not, but that's up to you. But I'm definitely seeing benefit. I, I don't think there can be a negative to people saying good things about your service. And if you have a good service, then you're going to get recommended and get the next piece of business. So I think it's definitely an equal platform. Uh, that people so use it. Mark, Mark Just, is uh, Josh is checking the mail? Or are you going to do it? I'm just looking here. Someone said that Rate My Agent is now a nightclub. So maybe maybe we'll turn into that. Hey, Josh, uh, mate, thank you so much for, for joining us this week. Um, we, we're going we're gonna to finish up. We have a, a little video, a little meme to finish off with something funny. This is a, this is a funny meme of a... Um, of, a, of an agent in the US. Uh, we'll play this now. We've got to push play. We've got, we've got some glitches uh, going on with this. We'll, we'll take two. We'll take two. Here we go. go. This Sunday from 12 to 2, Realtor Mike Bridges will be your host for this extravaganza. This five-bedroom, three-bath pool home is packed with features and sure to please. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. Be sure to tell your friends you won't want to miss it. Sunday, 12 to 2. I tell, you, I tell you what, Josh, uh, not many people would make a fool of themselves like that. Would you ever do anything like that? Absolutely not, mate. No way. Oh, I'd be crazy. Be crazy to do something bad as that. Open Gangnam Style. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> mate. Look at you go. Oh, well done. And, and you know the great thing about that video is that it, it's going to be around for years and years and years to come. It's, uh, it's, it, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, Josh, thank you so much. We'd love to have you on the show again at some stage in the future. Yeah, yeah, buddy. We'd love to hear, you know, later in the year how you're going. Yeah. Rusty, um, um, same time. Everyone who's watching, Done. 4 o'clock. Every hey, Josh, day. look forward to having a beer face-to-face one day, yeah? Done, brother. Sounds good. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us, guys. Good on you. We'll do it in-house. Legend. And the only people that are liable are people like Russell, licensed real estate agents. Um, so you're relying on dickheads like that to give your property advice, and therein lies the problem. <laughs> oh, well, well said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there you go. Thanks, Josh.